So, what, are, what would you say that there are any legal barriers? You know, I want to ask you about um, open educational resources in particular, um, and we've touched on them talking about Creative Commons. Would you say that there are any legal barriers uh, to developing and publishing OERs? Yes, certainly. The first um, issue is getting a decision, ideally fairly high up, as to supporting uh, open educational resources and their development. Um, it's, um, it can, there can be a situation whereby that, uh, a, a person is left by themselves in an institution and you'll remember that uh, the way the law works, that the copyright and stuff produced by employees will usually belong to the institution. So you're looking for the institution's backing to actually re release as open educational resources. So that's the, the top level of support. You, you want to make sure, indeed, that you're not releasing stuff under Creative Commons license that the institution would like to commercialise in some way, uh, because those two could be incompatible, uh, and let's treat very carefully. Um, moving down a level then, so you want to produce an open educational resource. Well, first of all, you need to be clear, I think, about why you're doing that, so you get the benefits, the benefits of sharing, the benefits of, of um, development through the community, the benefits of reputation enhancement. Um, then actually getting to the point of how do you produce them? Well, first of all, um, a common difficulty is the use of legacy materials. I have something I created five years ago, I would, it's good, I would like to make this an open educational resource. The problem with that is that when you created it, considering if you use other people's stuff as part of it, graphics or recordings or text as part of it, um, then you, you probably won't have the right to reuse and relicense those materials under Creative Commons. There's two ways around that. First of all, you can go back and get permissions from the people. That can be a very long-winded task and a tricky one. It's not often very feasible. Um, secondly, you can make sure it's all your own stuff, in which case there's no issue. You're the copyright owner. You can release under Creative Commons. Um, or you can forget about the legacy materials and start again. And again, in a way, it's always easier to start the project from scratch thinking, I want to produce an open educational resource, because then you can tailor the materials that you're going to include as part of that resource to making it an open educational resource. So that you're not going to use materials that are closed in terms of restrictions. You can make heavy use of Creative Commons licensed material within your new open educational resource and that will allow you to uh, relicense under, uh, under Creative Commons, as long as it allows derivative use, of course, in the, for, for the originals. Uh, so that's the main thing. It's getting the permission to include other people's material as part of your open educational resource. Mm. So you touched, you touched on some of the, uh, the benefits or advantages of, of um, publishing OERs. It, I guess it creates a kind of virtuous circle where the more material that's released, the less reinventing of the wheel there is. But are there any other legal uh, or other advantages that um, institutions that have um, publishing OERs have seen? Um, I'm not sure if there are too many legal um, advantages that are gained. I suppose there is a certainty about reuse. If you end up with a culture and they can use open educational resources to its best, then you're talking about a culture that can use other people's stuff that's Creative Commons licensed. And if you've done that, then that offers opportunities. So for example, at Just Legal, we have seen often the situation where um, an academic has produced very worthy materials and uh, the institution has recognised that commercialising, offering those materials on a pay basis to a particular group or at large would be a nice idea. However, if the materials weren't designed in that way, then there can be copyright issues about that because selling other people's copyright materials it can't be done. That's unless you get permission. But if you have the materials created from Creative Commons materials, as long as there's no non-commercial restriction, then you're free to do that commercialisation. So that opens it out. You're also free to include it in other resources. And so hopefully it's a bit of an avalanche as the stock of materials and open educational resources overall come, comes uh, uh, builds up over time. So I think that's the main one. It broadens the, the, the materials that are available without copyright issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, just, just to be clear, um, 
obviously uh, there's a debate in HE at the moment um, with uh, students paying fees. Um, I just want to clarify, education, as far as higher education and further education are concerned, is that commercial activity? Yeah. Um, you're, again, there isn't a straightforward answer to that except to say that um, the commercial is defined by the context. Now, um, the, and, and it's, uh, the, the permission in a way is a contract between, a type of contract between the person who's licensing the copyright owner and the user. And it's what, between the two of them, they would envisage commercial to be. I don't think there's any circumstance that I've seen yet whereby this has been considered commercial and no rights owner has come back and said I'm not happy about my materials being used uh, in the education, the mainstream educational context um, when students are paying fees. Uh, so we haven't seen any problem with it. I think on the whole that it will be non-commercial but again that's some sort of meeting of the minds between the copyright owner and the end user. Unfortunately, that's a very vague thing, and we all like certainty. And so, uh, an answer that says no, there's no problem, is obviously a better one, but it's not an accurate one. And even Creative Commons themselves, a few years ago, uh, commissioned a report on looking into what commercial meant in the context of Creative Commons. And again, you can go and look at that report, but it really won't help you because. Uh, it just repeats that that thing. It's it depends on the circumstances, and they don't want to closely define it because it will never take into account all the circumstances. Mm. So um, I, I, we're going to have to go with our cultural feeling, our instinct in a way. Look at the risks, and again, I think there might be a difference where a private, non-governmental, uh, non-government backed, non-mainstream institution was charging twenty thousand pounds and making a profit of students that begins to look commercial and a person might be wary in making a decision to use non-commercial resources. Whereas if you're part of the mainstream universities of the UK are under government control to some extent um, and fitting in with a fees regime that's uh, government mandated then uh, that's going to look pretty much like non-commercial for the purposes of the licence. Right, thanks. For, for, well, I think you clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> And the, 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 the last one I want to ask you really is, um, if, an, if an institution has, um, let's say, embraced the, the open philosophy, and um, I can certainly think of um, some institutions in um, England uh, that, and America, of course, that have really gone for um, publishing a great deal of their material as open educational resources, um, und, under what circumstances might they still choose to um, retain their, their copyrights and their, um, not to licence in this way? Okay, the uh, open educational resources and Creative Commons licensing should be used where it's appropriate. Uh, so there are a whole range of business models. So for example, the Open University uh, does have for some of its materials a business case of releasing that as um, paid for books and uh, materials. Uh, and the same will go for other institutions. So there are instances whereby uh, the resources are sellable or the institution wants to retain the option of selling in future uh, or wants to retain control for, uh, for some other uh, reason. And in those circumstances, Creative Commons is not the appropriate uh, means. You are relinquishing some control by, uh, and possibly a lot of control, by uh, licensing under Creative Commons. Um, so uh, it's about determining the business case. Uh, also, the other thing that happens is that uh, sometimes and often you will have the right to reuse other people's materials in the learning environment, the, the, the institutional environment, um, and that, that's all sorted out through a licence, a blanket licence, but that doesn't give you the right to release it under an open educational resource. So we, we all tend to know the CLA licence, which allows us to copy and scan, in some circumstances, uh, text. And we can do that for our teaching purposes, fine, but that doesn't allow us to go down the library, scan a book, and then stick it up as an open educational resource. So you might want to produce high quality ma teaching materials for your cohorts actually at the institution, but the license will not permit that being released as an open educational resource, and that's not appropriate. And you don't want to go down the, the, the the route of rejigging all your resources in order to release it as an open educational resource. I think those are the, the two main areas that said, first of all, where it's not appropriate because of commercialisation or the type of resource, um, so sorting out the business model, and secondly, where you want to have your range of materials that you use 
uh, such that you provide the, uh, uh, the highest quality for your sta standard students, if you like, your students in the institution, um, and you don't want to be uh, limited in the materials that you could use if you are making it an open educational resource. No, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much. That's